This indicates that this three bullets most probably has hit target or somebody inside the toilet. The target or somebody inside the toilet. Loud tracks, blood curdling screams. As I stated yesterday, there's been quite a bit of construction in the area. So what was last year felt, open felt, it, there's now houses, various houses between us, which is blocking. So I don't know how we'll do that test. You will even go so far, ma'am, to call it a mockery with no facts. Just not to make a single concession that can help that man. That's your evidence. This witness is now badgered and saying, you call it a mockery. She was asked for an opinion. She gave an opinion. If the council doesn't like the opinion, he should carry on, madam. Uh, uh, madam, I, I apologize sincerely. <laughs> Uh, my lady, I apologize. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it should carry on, my lady. That's fine. But that question has now been asked. Yes. We should move on. Yes. Um, Mr. Roo, I really think you have exhausted this. How well. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. It was quite raw still. It was quite? Raw, the emotion. A raw emotion. Um, and would Captain Van Aert have seen your emotion? He witnessed it. What did he witness? It was awful to hear a shout before <laughs> the shots. Uh, uh, madam, I know that you're emotional now. This, this is almost done. And then I said to him, it's very difficult for me. I, when I'm in the shower, I relive her shouts. You said to him that when you're in the shower, you relive the shouts. I ran back to the balcony. Um, when I got onto the balcony, the woman's, woman continued screaming. She started screaming again. At, at that point, the intensity and the fear in her voice escalated. And it was clear that this person's life was in danger. The, that's when the first shots were fired. Um, and I remember during the session of shots, I, I heard the lady scream again, and the last scream faded moments after the last gunshot was fired. But you can say, as you sit there, those noises, I assume, did not come from someone taking a cricket bat and hitting a heart or a maranti door, or don't you know? Milady, I'm certain that I heard gunshots. I'm familiar with the sound of gunshots. And I'm trying in all fairness, it's a man's life at stake, in all fairness to say, let's look at other possibilities. I met Oscar Pistorius there, who was a sports icon, looked up to him, and he was there at the dealership, and that's the day I met him. Once the shot went off, I looked down, I was in shock. And I looked down on the floor, and exactly where my foot was stationary, there was a, like a hole in the floor. Basically, what it was saying in the stories was, Oscar had shot me in the leg. That's when I stood up for myself, and I, and I went back to the media to protect my career, and I said, that's nonsense, because I wasn't shot. When it was the firearm was handed to him underneath the table, and he wanted to make sure that it's safe, and he opened the breech of the firearm to ensure that it was safe. And it was in that process that a shot went off. Okay, my lady, well, if that is the case from Mr. Pessoa's side, I cannot confirm because it was under the table. I did not see the firearm. I don't know what he did with his hands. I don't know. What did Mr. Pistorius say to Fresco? Well, once the shot was fired, uh, Mr. Pistorius, my lady, was in complete shock from what I do remember. The first things he said were he was apologetic. I cannot say what he said. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry, Kev. I'm sorry, Darren. But he was very apologetic. That, yes. that part I do remember. I heard a loud bang, which I thought uh, sounded, could have sounded like a gun, but I, I, I was hoping not. I thought maybe it was a balloon or something else. And I asked the guys, I said, guys, what happened here? Mr. Fresco said to me, sorry, Jason, my gun fell out my tracksuit pants. Darren spoke to me and he told me the gun fell out of his pants, his tracksuit pants, and it went off. 
I asked him what was the first rule of owning a gun. Shouldn't it be safety first? And he said yes, and then I hit him over the head. Well, you get to answers today. And I, and I want to put it to you. It's unfortunate because your interpretation today is a designed one. It's designed to try and again sideline and incriminate the accused because that is not in the first paragraph that I read to you. That's not what you were saying and it's not in this paragraph. If you ask a question once or twice, that's fine. I haven't counted, but it's at least four or five times that the same question has been answered by this witness. His answer will not change. Maybe we have to move on to other questions. I also believe that a cricket bat striking a door which is a large object would make a different sound, not a sharp sound like a gunshot. We've never heard a cricket bat striking a Naranti door with such force that it broke the door, have you? That is correct, my lady. I have never heard that. Mr. Johnson, you have never met the accused. No, my lady. I've never met the accused. You don't know what it sounds like when he's anxious and he screams. That is a fair statement. But I assume what you will say, that evening you definitely heard a woman screaming. It could not have been a man. Am I right? Yes, my lady. I'm, I'm confident that I heard a lady scream that evening. <coughs> on objective facts, if they were shots, if they were shots, on objective facts, there's no dispute there between the state and the defense. The deceased was then in the toilet, but the door was locked and the window was closed. And I put it to you that there's no way that even standing on the balconies, even standing closer, that you would have been able to hear screams. I do believe that I heard a lady scream and that it is possible for the sound to travel that far. I said, I'm a doctor. Um, can I maybe be of assistance? Can I help? And then she said yes, and she showed me inside to the bottom of the stairs where there was a lady lying on her back on the floor. Okay. Um, as I approached the lady, there was a man on his knees on the left side. He had his left hand on the right groin and his right hand second and third fingers in her mouth and I remember the first thing he said when I got there was that he said I shot her I thought she was a burglar and I shot her so what did you do then you got there you saw this person and what happened there okay well the next thing I did was I tried to assist her so I tried to open the airway and to look for any signs of life. She had no pulse in her neck. She had no peripheral pulse. She had no breathing movements that she made. She was clenching down on Oscar's fingers as she was trying to open uh, her airway. Um, I tried to do a jaw lift maneuver to open the airway. It was very difficult with the clenching down. And all during that time, um, there wasn't any signs of life that I could see. Um, I remember at one stage while I was outside, I was talking to Mr. Stander, um, and I noticed that Oscar was going up the stairs. And I asked Mr. Stander um, if he knew where the gun was, because it was obvious that Oscar was um, emotionally very very upset and I didn't know the situation in the house so I thought maybe he was going to hurt himself what I can say is that initially when I was outside on the balcony and I heard the woman scream and I think I also mentioned this to Captain Van Aert I thought I could hear a bit softer also a man's voice that was also screaming, but I was not sure. And I did not include that in my written statement. All I say is, and to demonstrate to you 
how easy it is to make an honest mistake is when you say to the court and your evidence in chief on the last occasion you had bang, 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 that that is inconsistent with your first statement on the 15th of February. I don't want to go in graphic details of what you observed about the headwind. I think you know. It was a terrible, serious, devastating headwind. Do you agree with me? I do. The medical specialists that I consulted with all say to me the same thing and after studying also the post-mortem report. With that injury coupled with the other wounding, that person after the shots would not have been able to scream. That person would be non-responsive. That's fatal wounding. Would that make sense to you as a medical doctor? It does. Can it be and could it be that when Mr. Pastorius is anxious that you will hear him when his voice goes up that it resembles a woman screaming? Before like. you answer, that, that would be the question. You agree? That's Can his voice resemble a woman screaming? I don't know. Can it? I will put to you that it does, the decibel tests were done, but more than that, we will call an expert who will come and tell the court the surprise of him screaming and that it sounds just like a woman screams. Not at that moment, no. Loud, blood-curdling screams. No, I didn't. Immediately after the shots, did you still hear a scream for a little while, moments? No, I did not. You now know, it was put to you, that the second sound was in fact the, the accused that broke down a door with a cricket bat. That's correct. So my inference must be that every shot is the time that the bat would hit the door. That follows. Is it possible to wield the bat as quickly as you've heard the shots? In that quick Mr. succession. No, I, you'd have to speak a little louder. I, I apologize, my lady. Yes. Is it possible to wield the bat in that in the succession as you've heard the shots? Well, I wouldn't be able to do that because it was in very quick succession. And it's his case of the incident, the night of the incident. And it's his case, and he had it tested according to him, that if he screams and he's really anxious, he sounds like a woman. That is not true. He sounds like a man. Now, have you heard him scream? Yes. Once or more? A few times, my lady. You said okay. Oscar got very angry. How do you know that? I was there. What did he do? He shouted at the policeman because he said that he was not allowed to touch his gun. He said the policeman was not allowed to touch his gun? Yes. And during that time, Mr. Fresco, where was he? Mr. Fresco had also stepped out of the car at the time. He was, he was present? Yes, he was present. They laughed and they said that they wanted to shoot a robot. And then... Oscar shot um, a bullet out the sunroof. What did he say? They both laughed. Now, this relationship, how did it end? Now, finally end? Finally? At the end? Yeah, at the end. Um, he cheated on me with Reva Stiankan. As a good pleases, my lady, I have nothing further. When did your relationship stop with him? The first time or the second time? First time and then the second time. And if you can, speak up a little bit, please. Okay. The first time our relationship ended was when he cheated on me with... <laughs> I'm sorry, please. Just, just take your time, please. 
he had gone on a date with a lady called Anastasia. And that's when we ended our relationship the first time. The second time we ended our relationship was the 4th of November when he took Riva to the sports awards. A week before the sports awards, we were in Sun City and we had a couple problems. And over that week, it was, it, there was a lot of commotion in our relationship. Um, so we were still together, but we just, we were having problems. In April 2002, uh, 2012, when you were pursued, the two of you, by a white C-class Mercedes, and he had to jump out of the car near the security gate where he lived. Yes, I do recall that. What can you recall? I recall it being a black BMW. But you can talk about it. Maybe it's another incident as well. Tell me about the black BMW. Um, when we arrived at his estate, he jumped out of the car with his gun and. Um, held it to some someone's window, and then they drove away. Yeah, there's a car following him. Yes. And both of you were very concerned, very scared. He didn't seem very concerned, my lady. Were you scared? Um, I didn't really seem too concerned either. But how did you feel the last time? How did you feel about the breakup? I was upset, my lady. You were upset with him? <laughs> Would you want a short adjournment? We'll take another shot at <coughs> The accused version of the incident on the 14th of February 2013 is he thought there was an intruder in the house. Now, whilst you were there at his house, was there also an occasion when he thought that there were intruders in his house? There was one occasion. Must I explain? Yes, please tell it to Paul Rodeau. There was one occasion where something hit the bathroom window and Oscar woke me up and asked me if I had heard it. And I said it must have just been from the storm. There was a storm that night. And so he got up with his gun and he walked out of the room. And then I heard his friend, his friend Matthew at the time that was staying at his house with him. He also walked out the room and I didn't hear what was going on outside, but I guess everything was fine after that. But he woke you up? Yes, he woke me up. To act the two access where Mr. Pistorius play. Upon arrival at house number 286 where Mr. Pistorius was residing, he took the opening to make him to Mr. Pistorius to find his side cell phone. That's when I started making calls to Mr. Pistorius house from the side cell phone. I get to met Mr. Pistorius Gaprat. I then spoke to Mr. Pistorius. And Mr. Pistorius said for me security, everything is fine. That's when Mr. Pistorius said to me, security, everything is fine, just as the witness says it, my lady. What did you see? Tell but, us what, what you see. What did you see? I saw Mr. Pistorius come off with Riva. I saw Mr. Mr. Pistorius coming down with Riva. Mm. My lady, I got so hurt. My lady, I was so shocked. I got Mr. Pistorius gebel. My lady, I called Mr. Pistorius. And Mr. Pistorius said for me, said, everything is fine. And Mr. Pistorius told me that everything is fine. That is the version chosen by the state. This is the version that the state has chosen. Not that security, everything is fine. It is with reference to Mr. Pistorius. He indicated that he was fine. As I the ochtend 
Meneer Pistorius a woord gevat dat everything is fine. If I accept that Mr. Pistorius word that morning when he said everything is fine. En sy perseel verlaat het. En left his premises. Wat zou dan gebeur het, my lady? What could have happened then, my lady? En hoe kom meneer Pistorius nie persoonlik eerste vir ons gebel het nie? And why didn't Mr. Pistorius call us personally initially? En meneer Pistorius het ook alarmstelsel as hy verwees het daar was in Trude. And Mr. Pistorius daar is hy van alarm system if he alleges that there was an intruder. We, uh, we had come past towards the, after the Krasmir Toll Plaza and just thereafter we had been pulled over from, by some uh, Metro police for speeding. The officer had picked up the accused's weapon off the passenger seat to which the accused had replied, you can't just touch another man's gun. They were just arguing and this, this argument had taken, it was just carrying on and on and in the interim, the, uh, the officer that had actually initially pulled me over had gone around to try and uh, defuse the situation. Did anything happen to the gun? Uh, yes, the, uh, the officer initially who had picked up the weapon had cleared the weapon, causing the bullet that was one up to have ejected somewhere into the vehicle. What happened? What did the accused do? <coughs> he started telling the, the officer, now your, your fingerprints are all over my gun, so if something happens, you are then going to be liable for anything that had happened. Something else happened en route? Yes, it did, my lady. What happened? I was driving. The accused was in the passenger seat. Sam Taylor was in the back of the car and then without prior warning he shot out the sunroof. Did you say anything? Apologies for my language m'lady but I asked him if he was fucking mad. What did he say? He just laughed m'lady. By that stage it literally felt as if my ear was bleeding. I had a constant ringing in my left ear. What happened there at Dash's? The accused had please asked me to pass my firearm to him. What happened after he asked? I had thought him being competent, I would not have to worry about why he had asked me to see my gun. What happened then? With, after him having taken the weapon and having cycled one out, what I don't think he had realized at the time, that he had cycled another weapon, another bullet into the chamber of the gun. And at that specific moment, he had pulled the trigger to, at the time, supposedly make it safe. You said he pulled the trigger. Did the shot go off or whatever? Yes, my lady, a shot had gone off. None of us had known where the shot had gone off or where the bullet had projected to. As soon as that had happened, I think the four of us had caught an extremely big fright and I just said, just carry on as if nothing has happened. What was the accused reaction? Instantly had passed the weapon back to me under the table and he said, please, there's too much media hype around me at the moment. Please, can you take the rap for it? <coughs> what happened next? Being a friend, I said, I would with pleasure, my lady. I can't remember how fast I was driving that day. Mr. Fresco, I've, I've never traveled 260, but what I want to say to you, of course, if I do, that's something that I will remember. That's why I ask you, don't you remember something like that? No, I don't. What I'm putting to you is in Mr. Lerina's evidence. What was said and what was put to Mr. Lerina is that Mr. Pistorius was upset because you'd failed to tell him that the magazine was on. I did not tell him at the time, but as I had said earlier, being someone who I thought being competent with a weapon, I would have most definitely have checked if the magazine was still in the weapon. Will you agree that, Mr. Fresco, that you have a great uncertainty about this blaming on what was exactly said and when it happened, when you were requested to do that. 
I have uncertainty of the specific time that it happened. I don't have any uncertainty that it happened, my lady. And you also have an and uncertainty of what was really said or not? No, I remember him having said that please take the blame or the rap for this as there's too much media hype around him. Please take the blame for what, Mr. Fresco? Please take the blame for, for this. Did he say for this? <coughs> yes, having what he had just done or what had just happened. So did he say, please take the blame for what has just happened or for what I have done? Which one? For Batesham, I can't remember. But it was definitely pertaining to him having shot in the restaurant. How is that that you can give evidence about the events in the morning or in the afternoon, in the evening. but then suddenly there's a blank? Not suddenly a blank. I just can't remember where, how we went our own separate ways or if we went our own separate ways or if I had dropped him or if he had dropped me. I do not know. Did the accused have his gun? Between his legs, my lady. Accused had his gun between his legs while you're driving from the vault on a highway. Yes, my lady. Oh. Then there was an interesting thing about the speed you were doing, a speed of 260. But. Whatever speed you did, did the accused tell you to slow down? No, my lady, he didn't. Did he complain about the speed you were doing? No, he did not, my lady. Did anybody take photographs in that car about of the speedometer or something? I had taken a picture of the speedometer, my lady, while he had been driving on the way down to the vault. I'm talking about a time on the way to the vault, that's when you took the photo. I agree, When the accused was driving, not when you were driving. Correct, my lady. There was no photo taking session according to you when you were driving. Not that I know of as I was driving the vehicle, my lady. Now, let me show you the photo. This is on your camera sent to the accused. It's taken at 16.40. It's 260 kilometers an hour and two things. One, the accused did not drive the car there, but not important. B, you were driving the car back, you took the photo, it comes from your telephone sent to the accused and it was at 16.40 when the photo was taken. So what I put to you, you engineered false evidence this morning in cross-examination. I see there's silence. If you've got the photo that I've sent him, then it must have been me driving at the time. I do, not, I do not remember this. Now, it, it's more than that. It's you coming back after giving evidence the previous night and come with evidence under oath. A, incorrectly shown who was driving the vehicle to the fall, and B, engineering evidence that it was in the morning. Uh, my lady, the bed <coughs> made a physical match with the door uh, in this position, which indicated to me that the person uh, hitting the, the door had to, be, had to be somewhere around here. But, Colonel, whilst you're standing there, just lower yourself. And if you're that, if you're that, just then. Oops. Yeah. Just um, Now, may I, with leave of the court, ask that the shoulder height of the colonel be measured as he is there. Because you make contact with the with the place where it's hit. One point two four. One point between one point two four and one point two five. At that time, when you did your investigation, did you know what the shoulder height of the accused would be without these procedures on? Uh, my lady, I knew that uh, it would be considerably shorter than, than what uh, 
he would be with his prosthesis, but I was not privy to the yeah, information on uh, measurements done on Mr. Pastorius at the time that I that I, um, I did the investigation. Only then, in November last year, I saw the first uh, measurements of Mr. Pastorius without his legs. And that was? That was also in the, uh, if I remember correctly, the shoulder height was 1.25 meters high. Like you would hit the door as you demonstrated. Would you now do me a favor and lift your feet? Because Mr. Oh, Mr. Stork, no, no, stand down on your knees, but lift your feet up. Up. Hit it now. I, I can't see what's happening. Just explain to me what is, is happening. Are you losing your balance? I'm off balance, yes, my name. You can try it again in case you think there's a trick in it. No, but you I can don't. tell the court what happened to you. My lady, uh, if when I lift my feet, I'm off balance. Could you hit the door with the bat? Uh, well, I don't know whether I would be able would to you do want it. To try uh, again. If I grew up without legs, uh, that would be a different story. The other uh, argument is also valid, my lady. If he had enough balance to fire a firearm, then I would suspect that he would have enough balance to hit the door with a cricket bat. I see there are pieces missing off the door. I cannot say what happened to those. Uh, as you can see, the door was broken open uh, 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 on, the, on, the, on the day of the, of the incident. And those pieces might have not been collected. I do not know. I would not be able to say where those pieces are. They, probably got left on the scene or whatever, but I cannot say that. It doesn't make sense to me, Colonel. You go to a scene, we all heard about the importance of the door. Surely you don't leave pieces of the exhibit behind on the scene. Is it that how it works? It was not me, my lady. So uh, uh, I, I cannot say what happened to those. I was not on the scene when the door was collected. Whilst the door was in the safekeeping of the forensic department, it somehow happened to get serious marks on it, which did not exist on the 8th of March, 2003. Uh, from this, it appears like it that something happened to the door after the 8th of March. Uh, which I would not be able to comment about, my lady. But it's not a dispute that you held the view that those wooden pieces, and to quote you, could have shed some light on your investigation. It uh, could have, my lady, but I was happy with, with, uh, with what I saw on the 30th of April, uh, that I could explain uh, the marks on the door and how it linked to the cricket bat. But what you also said, coming back to this, is that you were only focused on the marks caused by the cricket bat. That's correct, my lady. The marks that I suspected to have been caused by the cricket bat. On the door. On the door, my lady. That was your sole investigation. That's true, my lady. And anything else, all the additional marks, you ignored? I ignored those that I uh, could not uh, immediately uh, link with the cricket bat, because I know there was other investigations going on uh, on different st uh, for issues on the door, and it was not my, my intention to investigate other marks. How many positions did you assume in testing the mark and to pretend to eat the door? My lady, uh, as I can explain, if I can explain to the court, I first tried different uh, positions and different possibilities, and only when I actually uh, f uh, got the position that fitted with with uh, the f uh, with the cricket bat, only then that we took uh, took pictures of the of the of the cricket bat. Even on what was put to you yesterday by Mr. Roop, taking up an unnatural position, can you cause? Those two marks, in the angles that you indicate the bat was, standing at the exact same spot? Uh, no, my lady. I, uh, it's not possible to cause those two marks standing at the exact same spot. I took a specific note of an uh, answer you gave to Advocate Roo pertaining to what happened first, the shot or the bat. You said the bullet hole was there before the panel was broken. Uh, that's correct, my lady. 
can you say scientifically if we take the first mark if the, if that was caused before the shots were fired my lady scientifically um i would not think that uh, it would be possible to say whether that small mark if i'm correct now yeah. if you're referring to the small mark there on the on the side uh, i would not be able to say that that uh, was there before the before the shots were fired no was it ongeveer kwart voor vier, drie, vijf en veertig. Min of meer, al kan een paar minuten vroeger later wees, het ons op die toneel gearriveer. At around 3.55, we then arrived uh, at the scene. As I got into the portal of the house, that's when a lady paramedic approached me. Uh, Zij het me deel, meegedeeld dat die persoon die lichaam waar al geleed, reeds oorlede was met hulle aankomst. She then informed me that uh, the body of the person which was laying there, or she told me that uh, the person had died on arrival, on their arrival. Uh, die paramedic het vir my, ek en sy tesame die, die handdoeken en die uh, ander Meestal was my handdoeke gewees het wat die lichaam bedek het verweider. The paramedic and I then removed the clothing. Most of them hand clothes, uh, clothings removed from the body which, which were covered in the body. So you said that um, you and the paramedic had a look at the body. Have you established any injuries? Uh, paramedic's beamte het al my uitgewees edele. Daar was een kopwond. The paramedic showed to me that there was a head wound. There was a wound on the right side of the body. There was a wound on the right hand side of the waist. There was a wound on the right arm, net boek aan die elleboog. There was a wound on the right arm, just up above the elbow. And then on the linker hand. Uh, die middelvinger, as ek recht kan onthou, die middel tussen die middelvinger en die wijsvinger was daar ook gewoon. And also on the uh, left arm, on the left hand, the, there was also a wound uh, between the middle finger and the pointing finger. Yes. Dit was al, ek het uh, op, op daar stare met ek, uh, het ons nie die lichaam omgedraai nie, Die lichaam het net so bly leed. As it is in photograph 12. Dis net soos op fotograaf. In die kombuis gedeelte het die beskuldigde uh, blanke witman, later die bekend om my as Oscar Pretorius gestaan. In the kitchen, there stood the accused, a white male, who was later known to me as Oscar Pretorius. Hy het... Uh, Op, op, hy was baie emotioneel op, op, op daar die stadium. Um, ek het om gevra wat gebeur het. Uh, hy was nie emotional at that stage and then I asked him as to what happened. Actually he was very emotional. Not emotional. Yes, sir, you asked him and? I asked him what happened, but uh, uh, he didn't answer me. When you got there, this, this is what you saw? Dit is soos het gevind het hier. This is how we found it, my lady. Now, on the first tile, the end of the first tile on the left, can you identify that object? Uh, die eerste teel in die middel van die fotograaf, ach, in die middel van die foto, jylle is bloedspatel, En aan die linkerkant, as jy sien aan die linkerkant, die tweede deel teen die meer, op sy voor, linker voor, voorste hoek, was daar ook een kooldoppie. Aan paragraaf 86, there is a close-up at paragraaf 87, am I correct? Dit is recht, Ede, dit is die eerste splinters, as jy in die baardkamer in ons ook kom. That is correct, those are the first uh, pieces when you come into the bathroom. Then, paragraaf 100. Uh, die hele, dis die, die uh, 
cricket bed wat ons voor die waspak gekry het op die grond. This is the cricket bed which we uh, found in front of the basin on the floor. Met die handdoeke en die bloed wat daar was. With the towels and the blood that was there. And that is the, the cricket bed we found in the scene. And between the bed and the towels. En dan die patroondoppie weer eens tussen die handdoeke en die cricket bed. And the bullet cartridge between uh, the uh, towel and the cricket bed. And the blood there, you can still remember being as it is on the third floor. This is what it was. Yeah. The handdoeke op foot to 88 is the same as the handdoeke op foot to 103 is the right hand. On this photo, as you see, was the fire weapon still there. On the photo, as it is there, it is still cocked. And the hammer is back. Hammer is back. So is that's a door to the to the toilet. That is the right. That is. That the is correct. The door and the uh, the window and on the at the back. That's the toilet. The gedeelte wat aan die linkerkant toe wijs is die voorkant van die toilet. Uh, dit is recht. Jezus, ik heb gekeken of daar uh, enige uh, false entry. Iemand wat probeer het in kom in die venster, die venster raam probeer beskadig is. Ok. My lady, I did check just to see as to whether there was any forced entry, as the witness says it in English, or whether somebody tempered with the window. Die venster, die vlak is hoog, is op die eerste vlak, en daar was geen manier dat iemand onder, sonder meer die hoofd van een leer, by die venster zou kon inkom. The level is high, my lady, it's on the first floor, and there was no other means in which somebody could have gained access into the house through that window. That indicates the toilet. That um, bewijs the toilet, nee. That is right, yeah. That is correct, my lady. The damage to the wall behind the toilet, you And the beskadiging achter die muur van die toilet, see you that? That is right, yeah. That is the beskadiging van die uh, projectile, van die patroon wat hier gegaan. That is correct, my lady. That is the damage um, which was caused by the projector. Which went through. Did you look inside the toilet? Had you been in the toilet? Uh, yeah, I had been in the toilet. Yes, my lady, I did look inside the toilet. Uh, uh, yeah, this is a photo of the accused. Yes, my lady, this is the photo of the accused. On that photo, the accused had no shirt on. That is right. Yeah. That is correct. And that's how you found him today. And that's how you found him today. I had him found him today. I found him without the shirt. The uh, feel of blood that was here in the linker arm from the skin is a vergelijking with what on the forekant of him was. The amount of blood which is depicted on his body on, as on the photo was as much the same as the same amount which was on the front part of his body. The container with those watches you saw it on the morning when you entered the scene. The first thing when you went up in the deal the area gone. Het ik hierdie oorlogs is waar geneem. Upon our arrival when we arrived there, when I was proceeding to the main bedroom, I saw the swatches. En het wees af gesê, dit is uh, a tempting for any person, because this is expensive watches. Met die opgaan en die uitwees van die toneel aan die fotograaf. When we were proceeding uh, to the upper level, pointing out the scenes to the photographer. Het ek hierdie neering aan vir my dan om gelig en vir hom gesê, ek soek asjeblief foto's van hierdie I then asked him, telling him that I need pictures of these watches. And that I must sure mark that the while he the nail is, that the Russians get a look at the top. And I told him to make sure that uh, he keeps an eye on this over these watches. We so that stage with our decision, we are going to nail slide. Because at that stage we had decided that we were going to lock up the premises. <coughs> Want die bloedanalys, uh, as jy, uh, leitenant kolonel van der Nes, was nie beskikbaar vir die dag. Because by then the blood analyst, um, kolonel van der Wee, van der Nes, van, van der Nes, was not available on that day. Met die omdraaile, het ek na die box gekyk, na die oorlosie box gekyk. When I turned around, my lady, I looked at the box containing the watches. My lady, uh, the left bottom corner, the watch on the left bottom corner, uh, was missing. And I turn around and I ask Warrant Officer Van Staden, did you know anything about this watch? He told me that uh, when the, the accused sister came up, uh, she requested that she could want to take one of the watches. And she took that particular watch. And then one of the forensic 
uh, experts at the back, I don't know who's, who mentioned it, mentioned it that this particular watch, this uh, uh, green and black one on the, t on the top right hand corner, was the value between 50 and 100,000 Rand. And then I say, you, you see what I mean? We have to look after the property in this house. While we were all packing up and getting our things ready to leave, uh, Warrant Officer von Staden came into the garage. And he mentioned that one of the other one of these watches is missing. And I said, "What? What do you mean? One? What other watch? There's one missing because you hand it over." He said, "No, there's another one that is missing." My lady, uh, after the photograph was finished in the bathroom, <coughs> we uh, allow access to the ballistic expert. I was busy talking on my cell phone, arranging and communicating with, with, with some of my superiors and also as well as Warrant Officer Bota, uh, when I heard that the firearm has been cocked. So I turned my head to where the firearm has been cocked to see what is going on. And at that particular moment, the ballistic expert was having the firearm on his hand without gloves. So I stopped immediately talking and I asked him, what are you doing? And then he turned his head to me and I was looking and then he realized uh, there was no hand gloves on. And then he said, sorry. So immediately I turned around and I also informed Warrant Officer Van Staden of what had happened and I'm not very pleased with what I saw. How do you feel about your ability to observe? My ability to observe? Uh, uh, let's say, yeah, well, I attended a lot of crime scenes, so I've maybe a bit, bit average. Thank you to the f watches. You will see that there were, in fact, nine wrist watches. Was nine. One was removed by his sister to give to him. There was eight watches in the box and one watch lying on yes. the desk. It was not nine box, nine watches. Yeah. Two box. went missing. In the box. Now one two in the box? Eight. That is the two that's not missing. This one we accounted for as the accused uh, sister took this one. This one is the one that went missing. And the one on top of the cabinet? That one, I don't know about. It's also missing. I was not informed about it. Nobody knew that. I see that Mr. Buerta was kind enough to give interviews and he was talking about the bloody shirt of Mr. Pistorius that morning that he had on. What do you say about that? No, my lady, there was no bloody shirt. He was bare. Was he all the time without a shirt on? Without a shirt. Mr. Van Eesburg, I'm told that you're the last witness today and I must see if we can use up the court time until 3 o'clock, so I'm just trying to find some more questions. <laughs> I've no good questions. <laughs> yes, Mr. Nell. Um, that is photograph 469. Now, this interesting thing with electronic photographs is that it contains meter dot. I'm going to ask the Mr. Moller to see if we can find that. But it will indicate when that photograph was taken. <laughs> Lady, the meter dot, uh, the camera is wrong. It indicates that it's a different year and a different date. Um, it's, a, it's, it's not a the official photographer's camera, so I won't take this further because uh, the date is wrong. They took this scene long before that. <laughs> Service provider. Was there any discussion about the accused's interest in firearms? There were many, my lady. What did he indicate? He had a great love and enthusiasm for them, my lady. Performative examination, open book exam. Handle and use of self-loading rifle and carbine. Is that correct? That's correct, my lady. Then let's deal with uh, question four. When the burglars who are stealing your hi-fi become aware of your presence, they turn and they order you to go away or they will kill you. You are behind a security gate, 10 meters away. Can you discharge a firearm at them because you fear for your life? 
And the accused answered? No, my lady. Let's deal with question number five. There is no security gate between you and the burglars, and they turn around and both are armed. One with a knife and the other with a firearm in their hands. And they advance towards you. Can you discharge a firearm at them because you fear for your life? And he answered? Yes, my lady. Please read the question number six. Explain the legal requirements when using lethal force or private for private or self-defense. And the accused wrote in his wrote the answer himself. Am I correct? Correct. And he, what did he write? The attack must be against you, it must be unlawful, and it must be against a person. Were those discussed with the accused? In various ways they were. List the four safety rules in order, order of importance. How did the accused answer that question? He answered correctly. Always point in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger. Always treat a firearm as if it's loaded. And always know your target and what lies beyond. Did the accused relate to you any incident where he thought there was something wrong in his house and what he did? I only have a half a re recollection of one story that he told me which turned out to be a tumble dryer making a noise. What, what did the accused say? What did he do? Um, he went into what we call code red or combat mode. In yep, other what? words, draw his gun and go and clear the house as anyone would if they heard a noise inside their house. And uh, when he came to the source of the noise, it was the laundry or something in the laundry, my lady. I I'm not a collector of firearms, so I don't know, but your experience with people collecting firearms, would they be seen as upstanding people, as reckless people? No, yes. they, would, they would be upstanding people, my lady. It's just that you have some people that have a love for firearms and collecting them and others not. Correct. Uh, you're a warrant officer. That's correct. That is correct, my lady. And you're attached to the... which section? The letter letter of the Lungs in Vietnam. The Plaaslijke Criminele Record Centrum. The local criminal record center, my lady. I was back in the motor I went back into the garage. And I had the beschuldigde ook gevra of hij zijn handen gewas. And I also asked the accused as to whether he washed his hands. And he told me yes. And he said yes. And you then did the test. And to do me here to sit. Dus correct, I have had in any geval die toetsen gedaan. That is correct, my lady. I had in any case. And those tests were done with, on his hands. That is correct, my lady. And you also took photographs. And you also took photos from that one. That is correct, my lady. I had the responsibility to photograph. That is correct, my lady. I did take photographs of the accused. Just have a look at photograph 156. Kijk naar foto nummer 156. What time was that taken? How late was it for you to get here? 0512. The same time, my lady, 0512. 157. 157. 0512. The same time, my lady, 0512. And 158. 158. 0512. 0512, my lady. Whilst we're there, photograph 159. What time was that taken? Come on, let's go to 159. How late was it for you to get here? 0739. At 0739. What is that? What is that? That one can see in the middle of the camera. That one can see in the middle of the camera. That is the same duvet that is open. It's the same duvet cover, which is spread open. Who opened it? Who did it open? I did it, my lady. Why? 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 Ek, there were blood spots on the duvet, my lady. En ek het met my onderzoek verder aangegaan deur te kyk of daar meer is. And I was proceeding with my investigation just to ascertain as to whether there were more blood spots or not.
Then photograph 76 taken at what time? Hoe laat was voor dan nummer 67 hier? Om 0558 hier. Is 0558 my lady. What does that show? Wat be bewijs dat? Dus bloedspots als op die muur hier. Bloodstains als spletters on the wall my lady. So the blood spots you can see on photograph 76 was there where you can see the, the Die bloedspatsel wat op foto nummer 76 is, is het daar waar men hier aan gedeeld op die scherm dus met die vangen. Dus correct hier. That is correct, my lady. Yeah. What would the measurement be from here, from the corner? One can see the on the right hand side of the photograph. What is the matter van the right hand side of the photo? To the furthest wall? Na the eerste meer toe. That shall be as 5.23 meter here. That will be 5.23 meters, my lady. You found that cartridge case there. We've photographed it, am I right? I did not hear you from it. That is correct, Kirle. That is correct, my lady. And photograph 82 would be a close-up. And photo 82 is another photo. That is correct, Kirle. That is correct, my lady. Now, on that particular photograph, can you identify a cartridge case? On that other photo, is that good? What manier? Maybe we can identify it. Can you see the cartridge case on that? See the patroon dopi. Correct, Kirle. I do, my lady. Is that where the circle would be now? Is that where the circle can be now? That's correct, Kirle. That is correct, my lady. And you took a close-up of that. Ita naast aan de foto van dat familie. Die photograph 84. Of foto nummer 84. That's correct, Kirle. At what time would that be? Hoe laat is dat? Om 06:05 uur. 06:05, my lady. You see, to the right of the cartridge case, there will be blood spatter on, on the floor. See, meneer, on the right hand side of the patrouille dop, you see blood spatter on the floor. That's correct, Kirle. That is correct, my lady. Is that what you photographed? Is it what we here are? Photograph 85. Of 85. That's correct, Kirle. That is correct, my lady. Photo 100. Can you see the line of the tile? See, meneer, the line is the tile. The tile. Yeah. It runs through the E. That's correct, Kirle. It's correct, Kirle. Correct. Go to photo 609. Go to photo 609. Go to photo 609. Can you see where it is six, the, the word laser? Can you see where, where, where the dying word laser is set here? Please. Correct, Kirle. Correct, my lady. The letter. And what is the letter? R. R. So it seems that, but I'll get to it, I'll develop the point, it seems there was movement of the bat and not placed back in the same position. No, it was not in the same position. It was not in the same position. Dit blijkt zo, Ile. It seems like that, my lady. Ons moet net verstaan of dat de verstandering kom dat ik zie net als die achterkant in waar die voorkant is. We must just come to a point as to whether we understand each other because I, I regard that which is, he says is the, is the front part as the back part. Have you ever played cricket? Heb je hier al cricket gespeeld? Nee, Ile. No, my lady. Have you ever watched cricket? Heb je al cricket gespeeld? Yeah. Yeah, Edle. Yes, I did. Have you ever seen them hitting the bat with the backside or the side that's not flat? I've seen them here a long time ago. But I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to go to the other side. No, Edle. No, my lady. Which side do they hit the ball? Normally, I'm going to go to the other side of the bat. The other side of the bat, Edle. The flat side, my lady. And which side of the bat would face the bowler? The other side. Deel van die bed zal naar die bowler toe kijken. Die platkant hier. De flat side, my lady. Which must be the front side. Dan is het die voorkant. Zoals ik net nog getuig het hier leren, ons moet oor een ooreenkomst kom vir wie is voor voor en vir wie is achter achter. As I say to Elian, my lady, as the rule and I must come to an agreement as to who regards which part as the back part and who regards it, who regards the back part as the front part. That's how I view it. In my opinion. Warren, I'll, I'll put one st statement to you. And that is, when you answer that question with photo 101, you had no difficulty to show the back part, the real back part of the bat, and gave your evidence in relation to that. I object, my lady, that, that cannot be put. I object, my lady, that cannot be put. The witness indicated what, what he perceived to be the back and the front of the back. He gave an answer. 
He was ridiculed by saying how people bat. After he said, my lady, that what he perceived to be the back and the front side. I object to this, to what wasn't just now put. It cannot be put. Yes, Mr. Roo. I'm entitled to put it. He can say I, yes or not. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. You, to start with, you cannot argue with this witness. You cannot argue with the witness. Yes, Mr. Witness, lady. Then I will leave the question. Please. It's on record. Yes. Thank you, my lady. Who changed the firearm? Wie die vierwapen verander? Die vierwapen als zulks is niet verander nie hier. The fire message was not changed, my lady. Die mat onder die wapen. The carpet underneath the firearm. Kon geskyf. Was was dat rond geskyf? Dit kon rond geskyf. Could have been oh, shifted, my lady. And Colonel Mota, and who is that? Colonel Mota, who is that? Uh, dit was a person from ballistic here. That was somebody from the ballistic station, my lady. Was he upstairs in the house at the time when you took photos? Was he also at the the boys to take photos and photos? He was here at the stadium. He was there at some at, at certain stage, my lady. But what I'm going to put to you good. that there was a great overlap early in the morning. Between you and Colonel Mota, you were together in the bathroom, sometimes together in the bedroom, when you took the photos in photo album one, hey, when you said you were alone. He said that was a long time that he saw that Colonel Mota was in the camera, he was in the sleep camera, he took photos of him, and he said he was alone to take photos of him. What did he say about that? We will look at the whole photos with the metadata, when he took them. In one of it, um, nie is nie. Okay, my lady, then we'll have to look at all the photos regarding the metadata, just to see it and as to when was those photos taken. You satisfied you in the bathroom? Is not the fear, is not banned in the bathroom. That's correct, yeah. I'll show you. That is correct, my lady. Image 5373 of Colonel Motta. That's the entrance into the bathroom, my lady. Could you see the time there on the side of the photo? Can you see the time there on the side of the photo? Can you see the time there on the side of the photo? 0607 You still did, was that you see Colonel Motta by now? Eerder, I can say no, I get them not to see My lady, I will say no, I did not see him. Fire on in my bathroom, after it was made safe by Constable Mcisa. That the first time that the fire on was made safe? Wat ek en Constable Msiza om veilig gemaakt het hier. When it was made safe by me and Constable Msiza, he is my lady. And Colonel Motta's handling of the firearm? Ek het verneem nadat ek van buiten die woning af teruggekom het, dat Colonel Motta die vierwapen hanteer het. I learned when I came from outside that Colonel Motta also handled the firearm, my lady. Toe ek terugkom van buiten die woning af. As I said, my lady, upon my return from outside. Is dit al my gesê dat Colonel Motwa die vier wapen hanteer het en beveilig het? I was informed that Colonel Motwa handled the firearm and I'll put it on safe, my lady. And what did you do about that? Ek het om aangespreek en berispe. I spoke to him, my lady, and reprimanded him. En... Ek het gevraag dat hy maar eerder die toneel moet verlaat. And request that him to either decay the premises or the scene, my lady. Look at this from a different angle in 101. Kijk na dit van a verskillende hoek, op 101. Is it? Just the fold of that. Net die fold, maar dat. Is dat te sê? Is dat die selde? Dit is correct, Eerle. Dit is sê, my lady. So, let us just get it. Let's get, give Mr. Rudy benefit of any doubt. That bat was moved millimeters. Come and say, um, on stem over here, but die wat nie roe gesê het. Die bat was for a paar millimeter geskreef nie. En maar nou? Is die verkeerd? It wasn't in a different place. Dit was nie op a verskillende plek nie. Nie eerlijk. No, my lady. I saw four bullet holes on the door. And I marked them A, B, C and D. My lady, what I did is I checked on the bullet holes inside. Inside the toilet, there's only one bullet hole or bullet 
ricochet mark or bullet mark. Now meaning there's four shots fired. And out of the four shots, it's only one bullet that has hit the wall inside the, 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 the toilet. Now it means the three other bullets have disappeared between the door of the toilet and the wall. This indicates that these three bullets most probably has hit the target or somebody inside the toilet. Perforated the toilet door into the toilet cubicle. What was the position of the deceased? <laughs> she was standing in front of the door, facing the door. I looked at the post-mortem report, and I looked at this wound, how this wound was inflicted. Now, according to my consultation, that bullet perforated, penetrated, and broke the hip bone of the deceased. Now, with this wound, if the bone is the, 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 the hip bone is broken completely. It causes her to fall down from this because this leg will never be, will not be able to, to, to stand up. Now, in this position, it gave me the impression that from that position, she fell down. And falling down, she moved backward. Now, that's where I could determine the, 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 the importance of the magazine rack on the crime scene. If she fell down completely to the floor, she would be too low. The, the wound on the arm and the wound on the head would be too low to be in line with the bullet holes on the door. But if she's positioned on top of the magazine rack, it brings her position, the, the, the body, and the position of the wounds in line with the bullet holes on the door. The uh, bullet that penetrated the bullet hole mark B was shot, and the bullet missed her. Ricochet on bullet hole mark E on the wall, deflected to the bullet hole mark e, uh, F on the other way and it broke into fragments. Then the fragments that came from this bullet hit her on the back, creating the bruises on her back. Then the two more bullets. Right, the two more bullets, I couldn't determine which one was fired faster, which one was fired the last. But in this instance, the deceased was most probably seated in a defensive position, whereby it could be something like in this position. How do I determine that? Now? We look at the entrance wound on the side of the wound, and then the exit is on the inside one. Now when you look at the exit of the wound, it's huge, and most of the body tissue from the arm have been transferred to the vest that she was wearing here. And the damage that is on the vest is from the bullet fragments that perforated the arm, damaged the vest, and caused the bruises on the chest. Then we have one more shot. Yes, my lady. If you look at the position that I'm referring to as the defensive position, it's like if you see in its position, uh, the wound on the left hand, just between the two fingers, bullet perforated here, but the arm was now in contact with her, and she was a bit facing down. It comes in here. It also penetrated the head of the deceased. When it, on impact with her, skull, the bullet broke into two fragments. One fragment penetrated the skull, was removed during post-mortem. And then the other piece of the fragment exited towards the back of the head, and mostly was the lead on the bullet. That's the one that hit the wall, creating mark G on the wall. After this wound was inflicted on the head, she dropped immediately. She's in a seated position on top of the magazine rack, and or dropping, she just dropped to the right hand side, whereby the head ended up on top of the toilet seat. Now, when you do reconstruction, my lady, we look at the three possibilities or the three, three positions. We look at the probable position, which is the most possible position, and we look at the possible position, but awkward, and we look at the impossible position. If I can explain that, I'll say that if Shooting with, without the prosthesis, holding the firearm, this is the most probable position that you could have shot. Now, shooting with the prosthesis, holding the firearm, is, it's possible, but it's an awkward position. The impossible position, I'll say that shooting while lying on the ground, holding the firearm in this position, to reach that uh, height is going to be impossible. 
in this short space of time, it is not reliable to determine that the first, second shot missed and not the first shot missed, which shot hit first. It's probable. All we know is probable that the right side was facing, the right side of the disease was facing the door because we see the splinters, the secondary wounds. From there lady, it's difficult. I disagree with that. I'm saying that the disease was facing, the, not the right side of the disease was facing the door. I disagree with that, Malia. How far would their arm have been from the door to cause all these secondary marks on the arm? Could you give me a distance? I couldn't get the distance and I didn't test that. If you want me to do that, I can go and do that. Yes, I would. My lady, it doesn't mean it has to be very close to the door. Even at the distance of 30, 40 cents, it can still happen. At the distance, it depends on how fast those, those splinters were. And if you look at the, 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 the deceased, she was wearing a sleeveless vest. So it's easier for those splinters to hit her on the arm. Could you give an explanation for the staining of the walls, floor, and railings um, that, that was visible on the scene? My lady, it's a combination of uh, contact staining, of uh, drip staining, as well as arterial spurt. W one of uh, the notes that I did make at the post-mortem is that the deceased had long hair, and this hair was blood soaked and can hold a large volume of blood. Uh, together, uh, the, 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 short, short, the, the, the uh, short pants that she also had on, which was photographed at the scene, um, was also uh, saturated, and that can also hold the volume of blood. And this, I would describe uh, the main contributors to the uh, formation of the drip, drip trail. Arriving at the scene, what were your conclusions as far as the toilet is concerned? that the deceased sustained wounds while being in the toilet. Uh, these wounds were consistent with gunshot wounds from observations at the post-mortem. And that uh, three of these wounds, which the deceased sustained, could have resulted in severe bleeding. Lady, you, you would be the entire toilet, including the lid of the toilet. What can be seen here is um, very fine spatter. You can see um, broken pieces of hair uh, together with a particulate, in other words, tissue debris, and that would be consistent with the damage to the head of the deceased in photograph 136. Is there any way that would assist the court to establish where the <coughs> head was when the head was inflicted? Well, lady, as I say, um, this would indicate to me that the head was in the surrounds of the toilet because the pieces of broken hair and particulate and bone matter would follow in the direction of the projector because that's uh, the conal direction of the force. So she must have sustained or uh, received the wound somewhere in front of the lid of the toilet. The disease was moved from the toilet downstairs. What did you conclude? How did that happen? The lady on the toilet wall, um, denoted by my markings, um, VV, that's the wall in front of the toilet. You can see <coughs> there's an indication of motion. And uh, this would um, most likely have been caused by the movement of the deceased out of the toilet. There was also a transient area in the bathroom um, which are visualized on the photographs that were taken on the scene um, on the 14th, the stained um, the towelling, the, the area surrounding the cricket bat, um, there again, arterial spurt and uh, uh, transfer from blood soaked hair could be seen. And during this process, it is also where I saw another interrelationship between the staining of the bat and the staining in the surrounds of the bathroom of that area.